Hi, welcome to the farm. I'm Doug Winter. Uh, we're really glad to have you here today. Uh, we're going to take a look around, uh, kind of a virtual tour of what all goes on on a farming operation in this time, time of year. Um, I am a little bit about my farming operation and myself. I'm a fifth generation farmer. My great great grandfather started farming in 1869. Uh, we still farm some of that original ground that he started farming uh, back then. So we've been around for a little over 150 years. Um, we're a I'm a 3,200 acre grain farm. That's about 1,300 hectares. We grow soybeans, uh, yellow corn, white corn, and soft red winter wheat. Um, you can see some of the equipment sitting around here that we use. Uh, I am, my wife Nancy works as a CPA. She has her own practice uh, just a little ways from here in Carmi, Illinois. I have a daughter, Sharice who works and lives in Daytona, Florida, and a son, Neil, in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we're really glad to have you here today. I invite you to take a look. We're gonna take a look at some fields, some other things, uh, and uh, feel free to crawl in and out of the equipment uh, to get up and look around at, at what it is, what it does. Be glad to entertain any questions that you've got. If you crawl up on it, please don't fall off. Uh, but just feel free and make yourself at home. Um, and come on, let's take a tour of things. Behind me, you can see one of the three grain storage systems that we utilize on our farm. All three of the systems can tether, together constitute about 250,000 bushels of storage. Uh, this particular system holds a total of about 110 to 120,000 bushels of uh, soybeans, corn, and wheat. Uh, the majority of it will be used for uh, soybean and corn storage. Uh, for example, these two bins that you see to my right um, are used normally to store soybeans. They're actually predominantly for seed sto soybean storage um, for, for a couple of the supplier companies that we grow for here on the farming operation. Um, the bins over to the left, some of the, a lot of the smaller ones that you see like to my left and behind me um, in the far distance are used for different types of specialty crops that we need to hold in smaller quantities, whether it be a specialty soybean variety or whether a specialty corn. Uh, we use those as we grow a smaller percentage of, of uh, wheat in the operation. Uh, sometimes they'll have wheat in storage in the summertime uh, for short term. Um, these systems allow us the flexibility to market the crop throughout the year for over an eight or nine month period. Normally about this time of year, when we get about six to eight weeks out from harvest, uh, we, normally, we try to have these bins emptied out and have them all prepared for the coming year's harvest. Um, however, this, this letting us be able to control uh, the supply and to be able to deliver it in a more timely manner over a longer time span, makes it better for our customers that are buying uh, for processing, for export, uh, whatever the usage is, uh, to be able to hold that crop when they need it and deliver it in a more timely manner, in a more consistent manner. Um, that's a lot of what one of the big advantages of soybean production in the United States is that we are able to, con to deliver a consistent supply over a longer time period um, when, when our customers need it and in the best possible shape that it can be in as far as condition and quality. Um, you'll see the aeration fans. All of our bins are equipped with aeration fans and we also have a grain dryer uh, to be able to artificially dry the crop and the aeration fans allow us to put air through those crops and keep them in that best usable condition all the time. Um, it, it just helps with the overall reliability of the infrastructure in the United States to be for systems like this to be able to deliver that crop um, when you need it and in the condition that you need it. So let's take a look at some other things around here. Feel free to walk around. If you've got any questions about the grain system or the bins, feel, please feel free to ask me. There's a lot of technology that we use on the farm now. Um, we're sitting in the cab of one of the most important pieces. Uh, two of the most important pieces that we'll use on the farm are the planter, which places the seed in the ground in the springtime, 
and gives it a good growing environment to sprout and to grow up through the soil and to develop during the growing season. This is the other part. This is the combine. Uh, this piece of harvesting equipment is what reaps what we sow in the spring. This gathers all of the crop. As you can tell, this particular head uh, is called a draper head. Uh, it has rubber belts um, that gather the crop after the crop's cut off. Um, the advantage of this head is that it drops that crop on those rubber belts and they're conveyed into the center. It's a much more gently, gentle conveying process of bringing that crop into the separator. Uh, this particular combine is what they call a rotor type threshing unit. Uh, it is a fairly slowly rotating large drum um, that gently rubs the crop out of the crop residue and the growing material that's around it to give us, uh, which is behind me, a clean sample of seed. Uh, you can view what your seed looks like uh, coming into the hopper to tell if you need to make any adjustments on your machine. Um, <clears throat> this monitor screen here lets me make adjustments to the threshing and cleaning um, equipment that's in the back of this combine. Uh, if I've got too many hulls, too many stems, if I'm, or if I'm the other way, if I'm cracking seeds or I've got uh, uh, some damage coming through, I can slow things down a bit or change how the flow of the crop going through the machine is. Another thing that is um, fairly unique in, the, unique in this day and age, within this uh, monitor unit, uh, there is a yield monitor. Uh, what this machine will do, it has sensors in the clean grain flow. Um, it knows how much grain is coming into that hopper in a constant flow all the time. It also has a moisture sampler, so it knows what the moisture of that grain is. Um, the global positioning system takes a snapshot every two seconds uh, with a GPS satellite antenna that's on top of the cab. And it takes a picture and a positioning reading every two seconds and tells it where this machine is in the field. It also correlates that information to the yield of the crop that is moving through that um, this machine at that particular time. And so when we're done, we have a map that shows exactly where what the yield of the crop was going through the field. Whether you've got a high ridge that had a little less rainfall, is a little more drought prone and has a little less production, low spots that had too much water in them and are reduced or 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 they're yielding more because they had too much or they had just the right amount of water during the growing season. This lets us and contributes to the sustainability of our farming operations where we can look at what happens in a particular portion of the field and see if we need to make drainage changes. Do we need to make fertility changes? Um, that along with a what we call a grid soil sampling system, which uh, pulls soil samples from every two and a half acre um, or one hectare um, section of each one of our fields. Um, and we know exactly how much fertilizer needs to be applied in the spring when we're planting the, the, the fertilizer, fertilization equipment allows uh, to program that to put that exact amount on as they're going across the field. It constantly changes and keeps your potash and your, your um, phosphorus in balance across the field. Um, and that all starts with the yield maps, being able to look at that and tell what you were making per acre. It also gives you summary information, which helps us have much more up-to-date reports for uh, the amounts of what of crop that we're growing, uh, what, how much we're producing this year, how the crop is looking coming out of the field, just a number of things like that that our, our export um, customers are very interested in to know what things look like to do the most efficient uh, marketing program that they can for their particular business. Um, if you look out the left window you'll see the unloading auger out there. Um, up underneath that is what we call a grain cart. That we unload while we're moving across the field. Uh, this machine is set up one of the other technologies that has auto steer, so it tracks itself parallel every pass. Um, once I turn on the end, I will hit an engage button over here and the machine will drive itself to the other end of the field, exactly taking the most efficient swath and fully loading the machine to its most efficient capability of threshing. To contribute to time efficiency and to produce production costs and, and 
in essence, in in having to being able to take a, a give a lower customer price, we unload this machine on the go. So that tractor will move in and that cart moves in underneath that unloading auger and this process never stops. We unload while we're going across the field uh, until the hopper is empty and then we combine until we have another hopper, we come in and do it again. Then that machine takes and, and transports it to one of those semis and, and brings it into this grain system or to the elevator, whatever its final destination is. Um, all of these things together contribute to our sufficient, to our um, efficiency, to our sustainability, um, to be able to grow the crop in the most efficient way possible, uh, to be able to preserve the soils, to be able to analyze that we only put on, so that we only put on the exact amount of fertilizer on, on every square of ground that we farm that we need to. We don't over fertilize, it eliminates, it helps with the water quality, enhancing water quality. Water quality. Um, so we don't have fertilizer runoff from excess fertilization going into our water supplies. Um, it helps us to keep the soil in place a number of these practices so that we don't have uh, soil particles and, and, and a lot of runoff from the field going into that water supply and silt and, and different things like that. So all these things together um, uh, contribute into the, uh, the efficiency and the sustainability of the American farming operation today. Um, now we're going to take a look at some other things. Um, we'll exit from here. Well, hi, welcome to my bean field. Um, as you look around, uh, this is about 240 acres of soybeans. Um, these are a 4-8 maturity bean. Uh, looks like the growth on them is really good this year. Um, you'll see in the background corn field, we use corn soybean rotation on most of the ground that we farm. We found it helps with integrated pest management. It helps us to manage the insects, um, the insect population better and also to, uh, to help us alleviate the weed resistance to herbicides where we're mixing up our herbicide ke uh, chemistry from year to year from a corn crop to a soybean crop. Um, it, it just overall, and it also helps to build the soil tilth up. Uh, soybeans loosen the soil up. Corn contributes a lot of organic matter. So the mixture of that uh, rotation in, in your cropping system really helps your soil to, to improve your soil health and to, to improve your yields from the crops that you're growing on those. Let's take a look at one of these and see what we have. This year's crop's got a good root system on it. Uh, the small nodules on here are nitrogen fixation for, that the plant takes out of the air and contributes to the soil. That cuts down on the amount of nitrogen that we have to use next year in the corn crop to be able to produce the bushels of corn. Um, if you can look closely at this, the pod set on this plant is outstanding. Um, looks like this plant's got going to run around 60 to 70 pods per plant. Um, and they're just starting to develop. These are about what they would call the R3 to R4 stage. And um, normally we figure about a bushel of yield per pod set per plant average. You take four or five samples in an acre and then average those together. And uh, so these will probably be someplace between a 60 and a 70 bushel bean uh, this year. Um, as you can tell, they, they've got a very good growth this year. Root system's good. So the crop ratings from USDA that just came out last week are putting the good to excellent category on the soybeans, particularly in the mid to upper 70s, around 75, 76%. Um, and that's all across the United States. So I think we're looking at a really good supply of soybeans this fall for our, for our international customers and for domestic use. And so things are looking really good. Um, I think that you're more than welcome to take a look around. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me.
Well, I'd just like to say thank you for, for being on the farm with me today. Um, we're proud of what we do. I uh, hope you've got a good glimpse of, of some of the things we do and what it takes to farm in, in America. Um, some of the things we do to be responsible, to be sustainable. Um, as you can see in, in a lot of the ground surrounding in me, we're standing in about 25 acres of conservation reserve program ground up uh, in the hills by where my house is. Um, this ground makes a lovely habitat for wildlife, all various species. If you look around, you'll see a number of milkweed. Um, we are quite blessed to have a number of monarch butterflies flying around just this time of year. Uh, you may catch a glimpse of one flitting by. Um, all of this is part of our responsibility to the earth, uh, responsibility to our customers. Um, that's why we provide the most sustainable soybean product in the world. Uh, you can be assured that we, we try to do everything that we possibly can to be able to um, keep the earth and leave the earth in as better, as at least as good or hopefully better shape than when we inherited it. Um, we have woods to the south of here that you can see. Um, in the distance, you can see milo and soybeans uh, that are all cropped in, in no-till situations to try to keep the soil in place, to try to keep the um, fertilizers, the nutrients in place. And this is all just part of what we do to try to, to leave a better world than what it was when we came into it and, and to provide you with a responsible product. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, uh, take a look around for as long as you want. And we've really enjoyed having you today and, and, and thank you to, for being here. Come back any time that, that you want. Uh, if you wanna get in touch with me, they will furnish you with contact information. I'll be more than happy to host you and give you a more in-depth tour of many of the things that we do. So uh, in closing, just thank you very much for your business and, and for visiting today.